Hey everybody, my name is Paul Eston Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. We're streaming live simultaneously. Technology, baby. In three different places. The Heavy on Jets Facebook page, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash boygreen25, and of course on the Twitter sphere at well. Appreciate all the support. And it's time to get a good old buddy of mine. It's been a hot second, but it's long overdue. So let's bring him in. He is, uh, you know, the face that runs the place. He is the guy that people talk about. Ethan Greenberg, New York Jets team reporter, coming to us live from the Jets facilities. Beautiful. Ethan, what's up, brother? Wow. I appreciate the the welcome in there. That was that was one of your best ones. I appreciate that. Wow. Well, thank you. Uh, first off, beard game. We've been noticing it. Mm. Uh, what went into it? Uh, how long have you been growing that thing? And are you going to keep it? Are you going to keep yeah. it on? Yeah, great questions. Uh, to answer your last one first, I think it's here to stay. Excellent. Uh, I, I think it's here to stay. And the only other time that I grew a beard was probably in the pandemic, just because I wanted to see what would right. happen. So, sure. And I was like, you know what? It's, I didn't really feel like it was it was me. Then mm. <laughs> I will say one of the employees here, and he mm-hmm. he has been on me for years about growing out a beard. And I, it's our team photographer, Dan Spikowski. He was like, you got to do it. And I was like, oh, no, nah, awesome. I don't think so. You got to yeah. do it. No, nah, I don't think so. And then I did it. A lot of people were like, wow, I think this, this looks good. Then it became a joke that it was like a, it was like a, a Rogers beard or a quarterback ah. beard. Yeah. But obviously, we're still here. And mm. Tyler Conklin, very much in the beard game, really yes. sent me to, to Mars because maybe not to Mars. But the other day, you know, players came back a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. He saw me in the cafeteria and was like, and was like, whoa, okay, okay. And I was like, wow, that's coming from Tyler Conklin. I think yeah. I need to keep the beard. So this is where we stand. I think it's here. That's beautiful. I will say I got a similar stamp of approval. We were comparing beard games. It was a couple weeks ago. It was during the off season. Uh, so yeah, it was somewhere in there. And me and Conk were. I was trying to get some beard advice for what he used for that thing. And <laughs> well, uh, so you guys, yeah, you guys are on good. like a different level because you have. I like guess so. The, the thickness. I, I'm I'm keeping it like clean enough that okay. that it's yeah. not it's not gonna get crazy on me. But one day maybe it will get crazy on me. Well, I I, I hope you're open to that, Ethan. And uh, I will say so people could see it on the background here beyond our faces. They could see the little boy green thing in the background. And and I'm gonna be honest, Ethan. I was like, finally, me and Ethan are gonna connect. We're gonna see each mm-hmm. other for the first time. Unfortunately, I think actually you guys were out at the combine when that happened. But I got to go to the Jets facilities. Very nice behind the scenes. Dan, Will, all those wonderful people back there, Seth, and everybody. So it was awesome. So we're still gonna have to check that one off the bucket list. But nonetheless, mm-hmm. man, it uh, it was great to see the place. Very nice. I like what you've done with the place. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I had a big hand in it. Big hand in the place. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, man. I mean, and it's kind of good, quite frankly, that this again, I would love to talk to you anytime, but it's great that this has been delayed because I know the position that you guys are in is as team employees, like, you know, you can kind of comment on rumors, but like, hey, that's what this person said. I can't really say it. you guys got to kind of wait till it's official. Well. <laughs> Well, baby, it's freaking official. Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is a member of the New York Jets. And as we tweet out clips and Woody Johnson is sharing stuff and everything, and then I share a clip, I still get several comments on these tweets and videos and everything like, oh, my goodness, this is real. That is Aaron Rodgers. Like, Ethan, has it hit you guys? You guys did the Jets overtime show, which was a lot of fun with Caroline and EA and yeah. everybody. And you guys were interviewing Rodgers and Nathaniel Hackett and so many others. Like, has it hit? When is it going to hit? Like, Aaron Rodgers is a jet. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny because, like, it, I feel like it comes in waves. Like, for me, and we were talking about this the other day, what kind of hit me was the ovation at Madison Square Garden at the Rangers game. Like, that's oh, yeah. something that you like. Because you see the clips and you're like, wow, like, this is really happening. But for, for me personally, like, I'm not out there watching – practice at this time of year and to hear the kind of response of new york rangers fans and everyone in attendance at the garden the world's most famous arena to have that kind of reaction for the quarterback of the new york jets i think speaks volumes so that was really something where i was like okay like this is real it's and you know i think the short answer is it hasn't really hit me yet i think there's two times when it could hit me a random day in training camp, like when the pads are on, when you're like, oh, my God, like this is <laughs> like this is actually happening or yeah. 
the first home opener or like the first regular season game at MetLife Stadium when the Jets right. do their announcements. In my mind, in my little world, it'll hit me when the offense gets called out one by one and the last <sighs> player is number eight. Yeah. So that those mm. to me are like the two – Things if I were a betting man, like if I'm putting odds on something, which I'm not, but if I were putting odds on it, it'd be one of those two, but it could be something totally random as well. Yeah, one outside one, because we've heard a lot of great nuggets. Peter King also joining EA on the official Jets podcast a while back. I think that was the NFL owners meetings. And he's written about this in a lot of his columns that the Jets are going to get a lot of these primetime games. The latest of which Peter King said this week is his prediction is the Jets will either be playing on Sunday or Monday night football. And to me, the Sunday night football, when you go through the starting lineups of like Ethan Greenberg, Syracuse. Like when you get Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, Cal, I'm going to be like, okay, wow. And then running yeah. out the lights, like that's when to me, I think maybe that's when it's just going to kind of all the emotions kind of boil over. But again, that's probably just a random prediction with everything going on. But it just, again, it feels like the energy is palpable, quite frankly. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that the not only from Aaron Rodgers, but also in the brief time that I've spoken with Nathaniel Hackett, like, that is someone who has legitimate juice. Another Syracuse guy. Perhaps coincidentally, perhaps not, Paul. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, which, by the way, I, I have to tell you, I know we had EA on my radio show, uh, draft mm -hmm. amazing. It was awesome to catch up with everybody. Uh, but, uh, yeah, EA did say that the buzz, as my radio partner was trying to ask him, you know, oh, there's some buzz for Matthew Bergeron. Uh, Boy Green's been pounding the <laughs> table for me. He's like, well, I've been hearing the buzz inside the building. Uh, Ethan Greenberg has been trying to get some of his Syracuse guys loved. So, okay, so well, you're, okay, you were the look. source of that, I hear. Yeah. Yes. Well, of course, Paul, as you know, Syracuse football over the past couple of years, nothing really to write home about. So you're telling mm. me there's a potential second round pick and Matt Bergeron. And like before the draft, no one really knew where Garrett Williams was going to end up because of the right. ACL injury. The fact that Garrett Williams is a third round pick is incredible. So mm -hmm. and I think he's a very, very good player, especially for Syracuse football. But to have legitimate prospects be talked about, like hearing Daniel Jeremiah on NFL Network talk yes. about the Syracuse left tackle was like, this is really nice for, for the Syracuse program and for me, who's a Syracuse alum. So that was cool. Sure. Garrett Williams, same thing, just because it hasn't really happened that way in the past. And if you had asked me who would that have player have been, if you asked me this time last year, I would have thought it was Sean Tucker. It ends up me too. obviously yeah. not being Sean Tucker. But, you know, I, I'm going to – Take any little wins that I can with Syracuse football while I can. And that's a good place to be. Again, Garrett Williams ends up being the ninth pick of the third round, and that's with the torn ACL. So you can only imagine, naturally, if that doesn't happen, how much higher he would have been. So uh, great for Syracuse to be in the conversation mm -hmm. again, at least as it pertains uh, to the NFL draft. Ethan, you guys have been doing great work, obviously, there in-house uh, with all the interviews with all the Jets players. Uh, you know, Sitkoff behind the scenes. I saw he tweeted out the picture of all the screenshots because you guys do all these interviews, and these players are in crazy places, right? They're at their homes or wherever. <laughs> As you're uh, interviewing these guys, we, I saw all the screenshots. Is there something that stood out as you're interviewing these guys? You kind of learned something or something stood out to you about one of the Jets draft picks that you guys have had the pleasure of speaking with early on here? About them as a, a as a person, you mean? Yeah, whatever. Like, obviously, you have uh, – I saw Joe Douglas going to the Wisconsin Waterfall. He was loving oh, yeah. that with Tipman. Awesome. The cowboy hat look is getting some, you know, viral nature on social media. So maybe yeah. it's a quirky thing about their personality. Maybe it's something football-wise oh, yeah. you learned. Yeah, yeah, sure. whatever you'd like. Um, the Jets account tweeted it, so it's not like it's breaking news. Mm -hmm. I asked Carter Warren, the fourth-round pick out of Pitt, who is a New Jersey native, if when he saw the phone number, if he thought it was a spam call. Because as someone who works in New Jersey, you get a lot of spam calls. Yeah. And some of them are New Jersey numbers. So I was curious, like, did you kind of think it was maybe like a, a spam call or did you have a good feeling it was the Jets? And he thought at first it was spam because why would you not? Right? Like, yeah, right. And so yeah. I, I thought that was fun. Izzy Abanaconda doing mm. everything he did. Like, he had a draft party at his high school. Abraham Lincoln High School in so Brooklyn, cool. New York. Shout out Brooklyn. That's awesome. Mm. Um, I also found out that his favorite pizza place in the city, like in Brooklyn, is a mm -hmm. dollar slice, like near his home. So wow. I, I respect that. Big respect sure. for that. Because mm. obviously if you're coming to the New York area, whether that's Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, or Staten Island, you're going to hear a lot. 
right? You're going to hear a lot of pizza suggestions. You go to you go on the website or on the on the internet. You Google what you want. You're going to see a lot, right? Yeah. John's on mm -hmm. Bleecker. This, that, the third. Izzy's like, I just like my my dollar slice, okay? And I respect that <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that's one for me. I, I do. Uh, I can respect the simplicity here, Ethan. Uh, what are you heading into? Season six, season seven, season eight? You're somewhere in that range. Season eight. Ooh, okay. Uh, and so, as I said yeah. that out loud, I just realized that there might be some kind of symbiotic something with the quarterback of the New York Jets, who is number eight. Uh, there, there very well could be. By the way, a very hot ticket item as soon as the trade was uh, again agreed in principle on the Monday official on the Wednesday with the press conference. I, I, I was refreshing the jet shop and all of a sudden, <laughs> booyah, Aaron Rodgers buy it. Now I'm like, son of a, I jumped through. I'm going to tell you, Ethan. Okay. So I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm hitting the refresh, button. I'm like, I, I got to make sure I, I get my, you know, punch ticket in. It's almost like the concert thing. Hey, it opens up at three o'clock. Make sure you're kind of in the waiting room. Yeah. I, so, so I'm hitting refresh. I get in there the second that it opens at, because I assumed that it was going to be right there. I hit it. Already sold out on a couple of things. I'm like, what in God's green earth? What the heck? What happened in here? So yeah, so you have to be on the edge of your seat uh, for all that A Rod stuff. What Again, color he's going to be. Go with? It's a good question. So I immediately went, my gut said stealth black. So again, the Jets, of course, have their three beautiful jersey options, Gotham green, stealth black, spot white. So I went for the original stealth black. Boom. Already sold out. I was like, that was quick. So then I'm about to go, well, I guess I'll go Gotham green. And I'm like, whoa, wait a second here. Scroll. And I see you guys had this custom Jet stealth black jersey, but the digits are green. And instead of, you know, saying New York on the front, it said Jet. So I had a couple of quirky things, but I went, oh, baby, this is sexy. There's a sex appeal here. All right, booyah. This is what we're going with, and the sizes were available. So I got a large uh, Aaron Rodgers jersey, a pre order, boom, that should be here uh, in the June ish range. So booyah. Very nice. Right. Appreciate yeah, well it. done. Yeah. Good execution. And mm. uh, good thing no one trusts you with their Taylor Swift concert tickets because you would have been <laughs> out of yeah. luck if with your refresh yeah, yeah. skills a hundred percent yeah i would have been sol there's no question about it ethan i need the truth here on this because if it's something i'm just noticing late i'm a terrible friend if it's something that just popped up then okay i can live with it a little more so ethan you've had a bit of a social media presence here i've been noticing the quick videos on some of the jet mm -hmm. socials where you're giving us fun facts the hall of fame stuff was pretty good and then also on the gram okay the cooking on a week-to-week -week basis of splashing <laughs> a little bit of that sizzle in there and sometimes with spinning the food a slap a chop a cut there's a lot of action <laughs> happening there ethan how long has both the Jets official social media stuff happening and then your own. How long has that been a thing for you? So the cooking, oh, we'll go chronological order. Okay. The cooking okay. segment for mm -hmm. me, and that, that's yeah. really like, I'm the only one that posts that. Like that's not really on Jets social media yeah. properties. Right. That started, the Jets played the Bengals week three last year, and that was a mm -hmm. Sunday game, one o'clock. Yep. That idea came to my mind either Friday night or Saturday morning. So I went out and bought everything for Skyline Chili. I mm -hmm. made it Saturday. I was wicked tired. So I went to bed, woke up real early Sunday, edited the video, exported it, boom, boom, boom. And then I've been, and then I was like kind of behind the eight ball throughout the season because it's like, all right, like it, it you know, it takes a lot to edit the video, especially like with those little quick, cuts and whatnot sure. so throughout the throughout the season it was try to make it you know monday tuesday wednesday edit it thursday friday hopefully post by the weekend this year i'm ho I, you know i'm hoping to be a lot better in a lot better of a spot once the schedule comes out because i can at least start to plan whatever and i'm hoping sure. to make it a little um little different this year still gonna cook mm. but also okay. maybe add in some some new wrinkles perhaps do some oh. food reviews of Ooh, certain places okay. living in New York City, you have access to fantastic restaurants. You have access of to course. anything and everything you could imagine in the cuisine world. So for me, I feel like might as well try to figure something out, maybe do some food reviews. Now, as it pertains to the other videos that I got something for you, that's an off season special. To me, it's like what you saw with the cooking was in season. The I got something for you was uh, the genesis of it was in the off season. So you really haven't been behind the eight ball at all, Paul. So Excellent. That's good to yeah, hear. You're, you're yeah. very aware. I think that'll – I'm hoping that it goes throughout the course of the season, but 
I'm unsure what it'll look like throughout the course of the season. The off season, you know, it's kind of it's easy to figure it out because everything's a little more evergreen. You can pick and choose what you want. In season's always another animal, so we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Again, we're streaming with Ethan Gashdarn Greenberg here, baby. New York Jets team reporter here. We're streaming live in all these different places. Show your support. Like the video. Hit subscribe down below, baby, for all this great New York Jets content. Ethan, can you give us the scoop here? Is there a chance for a rebirth? Is there a chance to bring back an old segment that fans were, uh, you know, uh, you know, a fan of? And remember, you and Kalechi did that thing a couple years ago when he was on the <laughs> team. You were at those restaurants, you and players. So it's almost like your own cooking thing, but almost expand it a little bit with some player involvement. I know you said there's a couple of wrinkles coming up. Is there any chance to bring that one back? That was a that was a favorite segment from a few years ago. The off the clock segment is what you're referring to. And mm, ironically, yes. not all of them were food related. Like we did something with Avery Williamson in the batting cages. Oh, right. Um, That's true. Yeah. And that we did something else. I'm trying to think of what, but there were um, Jameson Crowder bowling. Like there are a couple different examples. Some of them Happen to be food related, like the one with Kalechi with Spencer Long back in the day, and mm -hmm. Mike Pinnell again back in the day. That was a fun shoot. Anyway, um, could there be? There could be, but mm. I will admittedly say it is more difficult. Like the the benefit of having it just be me and having it be self contained or not involving players is that players are so busy. So yeah, that's like, true. To try, yeah. try to like work in a player schedule. There could be though. There could be, and I. I'm not going to close the door on that, but I'm, I don't want to give too much of a vote of confidence that I'm giving false hope. I'm going to say, I'm going to political answer here. 50, 50 mm. shot. Would love to have okay. it happen, but I'm not going to be guaranteeing it. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Well, you well, you mentioned a 50-50 shot. That's probably the odds I gave you on each of those punt returns when you were working with Braxton Berrios when yeah, you did I, a, a I, similar I think video. you're trying to be nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun, too. So uh, we'll see uh, what other stuff uh, could potentially come up here. Ethan, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to swahoodle you in this way. But, uh, you know, I know the Jets have been very reserved on, on a on a team brass standpoint. So they get Aaron Rodgers like, yeah, you know, you know, we we got Aaron Rodgers and like, you know, like, oh, Super Bowl of oh, this, that they're like, oh, hey, one, one step at a time. We get Aaron Rodgers in your press coverage. That Super Bowl three trophy looks pretty lonely over there. Again, you know, Super Bowl expectations, Super Bowl bus. He said, that's something I embrace. I'm Aaron friggin' Rodgers. Yes, you are, sir. So, again, Ethan, are you willing to dabble in the waters? It's exciting times. We haven't been to the gosh darn playoffs in 12 years, baby. And all of a sudden, we could go from zero to hero. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say it is. First of all, did you say the word swahoodle? I did. Swahoodle. Uh, yes, I did. Swahoodle. Yes, okay. I just wanted to make sure I heard that right. I, very good usage. Great word. Thank you. Great job. Great yes. execution. Well done. As it Appreciate pertains that. to Aaron Rodgers, like, if you're not, if you're a Jets fan and you're not excited, you just kind of have to check yourself, right? Like, mm. these are exciting times to be a Jets fan. Now, I'm not going to go out there and say and dip my toe in the Super Bowl water or anything like sure. that. I'm just day by day, you know, Coach Sala has ingrained in me day by day, brick by brick. <laughs> We'll see it. We'll see what happens. But mm. there's a long time between now and September, which would be week one of the NFL mm. season. So for me, you know, it's May. I'm taking it easy as training camp gears up. I'll gear up. And look, I think it'll be a fun season for the New York Jets. Right. I mean, like simply put the personalities yeah. on board, the young players a year older, the players coming back from injury. And then, of course, you add Aaron Rodgers there. That's like the cherry. It's not the cherry on top of the Sunday because Aaron Rodgers is a huge piece of right. the Jets operation. But when you think about like everything that had been culminating over the past two years with all the talent of last year, offensive and defensive rookie of the year, to add someone like Aaron Rodgers to your pre-constructed Sunday, that is the cherry. Well, I, I asked this question at EA. I'll have to ask it differently for you because EA has been with the Jets forever. So he experienced both the Brett Favre, which was the 15 years ago, and him coming in in, in, a, in a very different way much later, obviously, in the offseason than in this case. But how could how can you describe your side of it when you find out that it's happening and you have to – you, Caroline Hendershot, uh, you know, uh, EA, everybody, you guys got to prepare for the fact, okay, we need to cover this. We need to execute this. I mentioned the Jets Overtime Show, which was awesome. And, again, you know, so all the press coverage stuff happens, and then you guys do another layer of it on your own. 
Can you walk us through the, some of the behind the scenes steps of hearing that Aaron Rodgers coming and then how you guys are going to, in your best possible way, present right. that in the best possible way to Jet fans? I think luckily the Pat McAfee show happened on March 15th. So yes. w- when you're, first of all, when you're listening to that, one, you get excited. Two, the whole building here got excited watching Aaron Rodgers on Pat McAfee say that. But that between Pat McAfee on March 15th and the, the day that the trade was reportedly agreed upon. 40 days, yep. Yeah, it was a long time. So we, we had a mm-hmm. lot of ducks in a row. You're able to do stuff. You're able to record things. And the I guess the only issue is, like, you didn't really know when it was going to happen. So right. I'll give you an example. We have a, a TV show, CBS Saturday Nights, and mm-hmm. you know we're doing a, a draft pre or we're doing a free agency preview show and free agency review. We have our free agency one tape, and we kind of have to tape one with a heavy Aaron Rodgers flair that never saw the light of day, but we didn't want to be SOL if wow. the trade were to happen like at a certain point. Like we needed to have something ready. So that didn't happen. So it required a lot of front end work. And then it ends up being that actually the timing of the trade was probably pretty beneficial because all we did, we did the live show, didn't have to coincide with our TV programming schedule. Now, this Saturday on CBS2, there will be Mm -hmm. an Aaron Rodgers draft show. So it'll be a little bit combination of both heavy Rodgers, a little bit of draft. But we had a lot of work that was done on the front end. Articles written, multiple videos made so you're getting ready just like not really knowing when to go it's like um it's like a braveheart like hold hold (laughs) like you know that's that's what it's like and so you're just waiting and waiting and waiting then you get the go ahead you're like all right here we go like this is we have this article ready we have this video ready like let's like let's dial up these two people for a podcast boom boom we're gonna do this for a live show boom 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 so we had a lot of stuff we were just waiting to actually put the plan in motion. So it was a long time coming 40 days to your point, but had it happened like in the drop of a hat and it was like, Oh, boom, here you go. It would have been mayhem and it would have been awesome. A hundred percent. Well, let's turn the clock forward, obviously. And Ethan, I think you've said this a few times throughout this conversation. Like this is a pinnacle moment. This is big time. You don't always trade for a four time NFL MVP, Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP for a future, you know, pro football Hall of Fame gosh darn quarterback. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of pressure on you guys to make sure you deliver. You, you've you got the creme de la creme. Uh, you guys tweeted this Aaron Rodgers video. It had like a million views. Aaron Rodgers eating, you know, eating a donut. Oh, oh, let's get that over there. Like, so, you know, there's like this immense pressure on you guys to, you know, as you're throwing up this stuff and I'm kind of leading into flight 23, we got the trailer. We're talking about it a little off air Ascension, that first episode coming Seth, uh, Seth telling us uh, Seth Bradley doing great work that it's a three episode series coming up uh, a little bit later here in the month of May that like what other stuff do you So you have that obviously coming up and that's has fans on the edge of their seat. What more do you have set up? Because I, I imagine it's a ton of planning now as we go from May to June to July to training camp preseason Hall of Fame game. There's so many big things coming for the Jets. How are you guys kind of setting it all up, knowing that Aaron Rodgers is in the fold? Yeah, I think that our process doesn't really change. It's just, you know, what can we dive into? What do you want to capitalize on? How do you strike while the iron's hot kind of deal? Which that process has not changed. But with someone with the magnitude of Aaron Rodgers, just his name alone, like to your point, you post a video and it gets millions of impressions, views, whatever. That says something about people coming to your website, to your social channels. Like, you have to – we have a great team here at the Jets. I'm not even talking about the football team. I'm talking about the content department, from the social team to the video production team in the back to the reporters to the live show crew. Like, every way that you skin this cat, we have a great team that I think have been waiting for this moment. And Mm. Aaron Rodgers, I think – has kind of provided, not him alone has provided a green light, but if assuming that you start to win more football games, all this talk nationally starts to kind of come to fruition throughout the course of the regular season, primetime games, da 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 it'll allow, I think, our department to take another step and to use 
to make this a flight 22 pun to reach new mm. heights. So, ah, I see. Yeah, you like yeah. that? Boom. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that I think we've been waiting for this moment a long time, and I don't quite know what's exactly in store. I'm sure there have been some early discussions, and I think that basically after the offseason program and as this time of year, people will start to develop that throughout the course of, of the year or to like set up the regular season and training camp. But those conversations are going to come soon, and I, can, I, don't, I can't guarantee much, but I can guarantee that Jets fans will be very pleased and excited about the content that's coming their way in 23. All right, Ethan, only a couple more before we get you out of here. A, a tenpole event, although I'm not sure if even the NFL knew it was going to be as it's come out, is the schedule release. It is a thing. The schedule release shows that come out that night at 8 o'clock, the, the speculation of, of schedule guessing, primetime games, and the whole evaluation. Obviously, there is a, a great palpable buzz heading into this uh, for the Jets schedule. How does it work for you guys? When do you guys get the schedule? When do we hear about it? Like, how big is that gap of time? Because, obviously, you guys have done some cool stuff. The NFL Blitz won a couple years ago. Like, you have a creative way to kind of let the world know who the heck the Jets are playing and when they're playing them and the season tickets and everything else that your yeah. guys are able to do with that. So uh, give us the info there. What's the deets? I think it, it will varies team by team, I would imagine. Okay. And each team has their own process. But typically, I would say there's like a very small group of people who get the schedule. Like it is truly like a need to know basis. Like, mm -hmm. for example, to, let, let's use EA as the example. Let's yeah, say he yeah. writes the article of the schedule and, you know, the boom, 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 boom. Like, that is a need-to-know basis. Like, he needs to be able to do that. So, 8 o'clock comes, there you go. And yeah. there are different people within the organization that are obviously on a need-to-know basis to create, whether that's content, whether that's some kind of marketing, whether that's something in the football side or public relations. Like, there are certain people within the building that are in that, classified circle and then they go throughout their day and they're like there have been years where you know especially early in my career where i'm just hanging out eight o'clock comes around you're like oh okay that's who we have in week one great okay mm. and there have been other times where i've gotten it where i've seen things like slightly before and things where i've gotten like tidbits and then also like you start to see leaks throughout the nfl twitter yeah you know what i mean not the NFL's Twitter account, but different different accounts throughout the league, like who cover whether that be the Jets, whether that be the NFL as a whole, they'll start to put things out there that they hear. And then you're like, oh, I wonder if that's true. But then you don't mm -hmm. really know. So it, it varies, I would say. And there have been times where it's been 8 p.m. for me, and I'm just like, hey, like any other day, like, okay, we'll see who – like you already know who the Jets are playing. It's just a question of, of when. But yeah. the biggest thing is this year for the Jets is it hasn't really been a thing of years past. How many primetime games? And you mentioned it with mm. Peter King. That obviously is going to be something that piques, I think, my interest and a lot of fans' interest. All right, Ethan, flex on us real quick. Are you one of those elite few in which you reference <laughs> the need-to-know basis? Are you in that group, Ethan? I'm going to say I'm not in that group. Okay, okay. I think you're just saying that's a wink-wink, but uh, I got you, buddy. I, <laughs> no, I, I got you. I'm not in the group. I'm not in the group. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's talk about that prime time i you know i don't want to make you the official like prediction guy because none of us know we're all just kind of even peter king as he said he's even speculating about what he believes is going to happen with the jets so we're, we're like i mean it's like automatic with aaron Rodgers and the jets and everything like right. we're getting the prime time action right uh, there ethan uh, you would imagine right like yeah there's a lot there's a lot of buzz around the jets right now and especially with the quarterback Aaron Rodgers coming to New York, like mm. you would imagine that there'd be some primetime opportunities, especially given the market and yes. the schedule. Like the Jets' division itself oh. is worthy of primetime. Then mm -hmm. you factor in the non division opponents where they got some sexy games Chiefs, Eagles, like, yeah. those, like those are two high powered opponents. Mm -hmm. Like that, you could make a case for a lot Cowboys. of Cowboys. Yeah. yeah. A lot of games, a lot of games. And like, I know the, the Browns didn't have the year that they probably wanted, but if the Browns end up being a good team in 2023 because they have a talented roster, like, to me, I wonder, is that, like, a game that could be primetime? It could be. Interesting. Right? Okay. Um, I'm not saying it will be, but I do think that 
there are some non-division games that are absolutely worthy of Jets Giants alone is worthy. Yeah, of, of course, obviously. Yeah. Game. So I'm excited right. to see what happens. Yeah, Ethan, we're going to end here, but I, I need your honesty, okay? Boy Scout honor, okay, with this question okay. I'm about to give you. I, I want your honest take on this one. This one was apparently – I didn't realize how polarizing it was until I sent it out into the universe. That's the power boy green, baby. That's what happens, okay? We got the viral golden Midas touch, okay? There's been some rumors, some speculation, Ethan, that the New York Jets and Hard Knocks – are destined to happen. The the four eligible teams, the Chicago Bears, the New Orleans Saints, uh, the Washington Commanders, and then, of course, the New York Jets. And there's been some buzz that the Jets will be the team that's selected. And according to all the NFL people, if Hard Knocks chooses the Jets, the Jets have absolutely no choice in the matter. But the question I want to ask you, Ethan, is that I put it out there, said, woo, let's run it back. Go get me a gosh darn snack. Like I, I'm like, yeah, baby, sign me up. More content for Jet fans. That's great. But I put it out into the universe, Ethan, and the response from Jet fans, 99%. We got hundreds of comments. They said, absolutely not. One Jets drive, baby. Uh, we don't want any of that hard knocks nonsense. That was fun like a decade ago. But what we want is one Jets drive. That's the only thing we want. So I ask you, Ethan, if hard knocks comes to town, I guess, w would one Jets drive still do their own thing and do all the awesome stuff they do? Would they kind of take a step back if hard knocks comes in? Uh, I guess we'll start there. Boy Scout honor, so this is like my hand on the Bible, yeah. right hand up. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Great, great technique. I don't know for sure. Okay. But I would imagine that the boys would still want to cook. Okay. You know? I like that. I, I don't know for sure what like how different it would look other compared to other years, but I would imagine that the one Jets Drive train would not stop. But I Does it warm your heart to hear that response from fans? I'm telling you hundreds. I'm not just trying to blow smoke up your skirt here, Ethan. Like, it, there are hundreds of people that immediately said, absolutely not, you dumb animal. And I'm like, oh, okay. Don't shoot the messenger here. I was just putting the <laughs> Look, post out. Of course. But, but uh, yeah. Of course it does. Yeah, because it, it's a testament to the work of the department. And you were talking about him earlier, Seth Bradley, among others. And mm -hmm. it, it's been the evolution of One Jet Strive covering the team from you know what 2017 to present to have the opportunity to make stories and tell stories about Aaron Rodgers and the 2023 New York Jets I would imagine like I said earlier it excites everybody so mm -hmm. if you're if you're responsible for one jet strive and you had to tell stories from 2017 you know 2020 was a tough year obviously for the Jets yeah. So yeah. when you're telling those stories, I would imagine you would want the opportunity to tell the 2023 story. So that's how I view it. And of course it warms your heart because it means that those guys in the back do a fantastic job, which they do, but it's also about the recognition. And yes, it is an Emmy award winning series, but to have the fans have that kind of response is incredible. So yeah, I, I don't want to speak for those guys, but I'll yeah. do a little bit. Like we we appreciate all we appreciate it all. Like whenever you're coming mm -hmm. to Jet stuff over something else, of course it's it's a token of appreciation. Absolutely. And by the way, could you confirm that? I, I've heard that from the NFL, but like Jet fans were still like kind of combating against it. Maybe they just didn't want to hear it. If Hard Knock says, "Hey, Jets, you're the one," which again I would imagine with the other teams, no offense, yeah. the other teams. But I mean, come on, people. I mean, look at the situation here. That like the, reportedly, according to the NFL, they can't say no. Is that true? Like, if the Hard Knock so. says I mean, Jets like, land, I want you? To my knowledge, I believe so. Mm -hmm. But I'm not 100% okay. sure. Like, okay. I've heard that if a team were to volunteer, like, I've heard teams can volunteer. Right. But I don't know. I don't think that's really a thing. Like, I don't think teams often go volunteer. Like, <laughs> hey, right. why don't you come to our headquarters and put cameras everywhere and interview right. all our guys and blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't really think that's a thing. Hard Knocks yeah. is an incredible production, but I don't think mm -hmm. teams are, you know, with open arms accepting it, at least in yeah. years past. Now, granted, I understand from a storytelling perspective why the Jets are appealing over the other teams. I guess we'll yeah. see what happens.
hundred percent. And uh, in closing, I just want to say to all the fans that don't want hard knocks, I think it's a distraction. If I uh, check the old, uh, could put the reading glasses on. The last time the Jets won hard knocks, I went to the AFC Championship game. Not too shabby. If that ultimately is what happens, that's a that's a doorstep from the Super Bowl. So hey, you know, just uh, kind of sprinkling, throwing it out there. I love the one well Jets done. drive people. I say, why not both? But uh, hey, more content for all of us. But. Uh, Hey, we'll see what happens here, Ethan. We'll see what happens, pal. Yeah, I think it'll be exciting. Regar- regardless of hard knocks or not, the yeah. 2023 Jets will be an exciting team to watch. All right, Ethan, uh, in closing, can you give us any teases of the stuff you guys have coming up? We saw again. We saw Flight 20, 20, uh, or Flight 23, rather. That looks exciting. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else on the horizon? You can give us a, little, a few morsels, a few breadcrumbs in closing to kind of promote up the brand. The platform is yours, my friend. <laughs> I think... Flight 23 is probably the biggest one. It's mm-hmm. the one that requires the most uh, front and back end work. And I would say other than that, like we have a couple TV shows coming. We'll obviously have a training camp preview and that's a couple months from now, but yeah. not really a whole lot, you know, like right now I think we're getting our ducks in a row and for training camp, but I would just stay tuned because of course things are going to pop up and content's going to be great. Yeah. All for right. Sure. Uh- yeah, there you go. Again, New York Jets Super Bowl contenders. Ethan may not be willing to say it, but I'm saying it, baby. Booyah! Let's get the Lombardis. Let's get the parade schedule. We are freaking coming, baby. Oh, it feels good. It feels real damn good, Ethan, just to say that. Mm, Trying to get that on the chest. You know, flex on them a little bit. Yeah, hey, I, I love how excited you are. I love yeah. how excited Jets fans are. And it's, you know, buckle up, right? Like, it's going to be fun regardless. 100%. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Again, make sure you follow Ethan Greenberg, uh, both on Twitter and Instagram, for his uh, cooking videos and future you know, uh, television show on the Food Network. We're looking forward to all that fun jazz uh, coming up in the future. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.